not, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to have the six. I'm gonna run it in real time across the Wi-Fi, just so you can see it. Um, about a year and a half ago, um, our CIO, I, I'm in, I, I'm in ITS. I guess I should tell you, I'm an instructional technologist for the fine arts. I'm in a work with ITS, that's my department, but I deal with the, all the fine arts, art, music, and theater. Um, about a year and a half ago, our CIO uh, wanted to bring in a, a cloud storage service for everyone at Furman. He went, um, I believe, to an Internet 2 consortium uh, meeting, and they were talking about Box. Uh, Box uses 200 and 56-bit um, AES encryption um, in general, and, and then SSL, 256-bit SSL encryption for all your transfers. Um, so that was the one to use compared to Dropbox or Google Drive, etc. There is absolutely no security on there, but at the same time, a lot of professors were using Dropbox um, in particular, which has been hacked twice, I think, so far. So he, he wanted to purchase that for everyone at firm, staff, faculty, and students. Um, he brought it up in a meeting. Uh, I, I believe I was the only one in there who had ever used it. I've used it now, I guess, for seven years. So I, I, he put me in charge of it. So, <laughs> so uh, we, we, set up, we set up a committee, blah, blah, blah. We rolled it out uh, January 2013 to everyone on campus. Um, I got an email yesterday from Kathy Frazier, one of our systems people was on the committee. We've had, I believe, 1,500 people sign up. Um, Firm is not a big campus, but that's a pretty good number, and that's kind of what we were looking for at this time. This right here is just box.com, okay? You can go on there, set, set up a free account, get five gigs of space, you know, like Dropbox, etc. cetera. The, the, the main difference that I'm gonna try to show y'all is this, are the security features. Um, the one thing, the one thing that our CIO really wanted were people to, to be able to access their files and folders off campus without using VPN. Um, our local shares are great, but first off, they have no security. Absolutely, I mean, shh, don't tell anybody. No security <laughs> at all. And on top of it, you have to have VPN. It can be a little hairy for people. So this is what we decided on. So. When we rolled it out, this is what it looked like, looks like. Now, this is at Furman.box.com. It's math, so the um, address is a little different, but you can get to it from our portal at Furman.edu if you can authenticate and get in. So, at first, it, it was a situation where a lot, a lot, a lot of people were, were confused. You know, what are we doing this for, etc. But when it was explained to them, first and foremost, that initially they had 25 gigs of free space then that caught their attention. Now everybody's been bumped up to 50, okay? So everyone at Furman from, you know, the, the, the bottom feeders up to the top have this. Including students. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, the students are at the top, to me. Because, I mean, that's why we're here, we're to teach. It's not about people making money. Um, okay, okay, so, so from there, we connected it. I logged in there, I logged in quickly, or actually, I, I was already logged in. Um, there, there, there's an in common sign-in page that, that, that we set up to connect to our Active Directory login. So my username is mvic. I put in mvic and my network password. Okay, this is for everybody across the board. So it wasn't a situation where they had to have another password. Um, the people on the committee helped set, um, set that up, the systems people, and got it connected. It was a little hairy, but once they got it connected, it, uh, honestly, we've had no trouble with it. Okay, so from here, I'm just using Safari. You, you can get on any browser, on anyone's computer, and access your files and folders, which is wonderful. Um, you can stream fr from here, most file types. You can stream from here, common file types. Um, this, the simplest way to explain it is, once it comes up, you sign in, you click New, you get a new folder, it comes up. I'll just type ACS. From here, I can, I, can, I can invite people immediately. I say not to do that because they would immediately get a notification. But let me just go through and just click OK. All right, I'm on y'all's Wi-Fi and it's working great. Okay, so here I am. 
I clicked share. Now let's talk about the permissions because prior to this, with, with our local shares, uh, a, a, a user would have to get approval, send it to our service center. From there, it would, go, it would go to one of our systems people who would have to set it up. She would have to get the permissions. If it was a class, I mean, it, it, could, it could take a little while if she was busy, okay? This gives the user the power to share and collaborate and set the permissions. At, at the same time, you know, you could mess up and share something you weren't supposed to. So, I mean, it makes people be a little more conscious. Okay, so I click on access. Our default access is for collaborators only, meaning people at Furman. This system, the way we have it set up, does not self-populate. Once, once I share something with somebody, their name would self-populate. That's been a slight caveat for some people. That's a security feature built in, so we didn't have to put everyone's username in there. But once it's in there, it's there. Um, okay, so you can set a custom URL. I mean, I know a lot of this is, is obvious to everybody, but I'll just show you. You can set expiration. I, I can unshare it on a specific day, and then I can actually have it automatically delete on a day. Okay, this is deep security, and it takes you out of the loop if you set it up here, so you don't have to worry about that option. None, none of this from, from this aspect here as collaborators only is open on the web. If for some stretch you put, you know, Furman 2013 as your URL and your friend got it, who wasn't on Box, who wasn't at Furman, who the file and folder hadn't been shared with, they would just get a page that said, you need to log in here, but, and then they'd log in and then they wouldn't even have access to it if they had an account. If they didn't have an account, they'd set one up and get the same error. You can also collaborate with people off campus. These, these are people who, who may not even have a Box account, which is good, okay? So you, again, you can set a custom URL. Um, you can come in and actually set a password. So I could share something with y'all. I could have it unshared tomorrow by noon and send y'all the password. Only you would have it and you would have access to it. Now, I guess one issue with that would be is if you forward it to somebody with the password, okay? Because most, I don't, most of y'all probably don't have a box account, or, or if you do, then you would still have to put in the password. So that's, that's the point, I believe, for most people of setting an expiration, again, the same window, and then setting restrictions. Okay, so you can turn downloading off. Now this is the open area. This is for anyone. What we're mainly dealing with are collaborators, which are local people, and then everyone with the Furman edu email. From there, there are actually more permissions. If you click on advanced options, you get this window. Now, here are some of the deeper permissions. If you hover over the default, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it's kind of the way it is, is an editor. An editor has all the power, okay? So, People at Furman, when I teach this to people, I make clear to make sure the permissions because I wouldn't want somebody to have that and then delete the file on accident. And when it's deleted, it goes into the trash on box and you have 30 days to get it out of there. They say after that they may be able to get it for you, but they're not confident. So people have to be aware of that. Um, there are also co-owners, deep permissions here, viewer, uploader, all this is self-explanatory because we're educated people. Viewer, previewer. Okay, so one of the, one, one of the things that um, I think Fred what, what was talking about or, or within your discussion what, was putting copyrighted uh, material online. You can keep it, uh, like I was saying just quickly back then, but behind the firewall, make it where they can't download it. They can just listen to it for the class. Um, this... <laughs> There are two professors using this right now. Um, as many of you know, when, we, when you bring out new technology, which this is, some people are a little slow to adopt it. And you have those people saying that uh, Dropbox you know, is easier and better. Yes, Drop, Dropbox is easier, but again, it has no security, and, and you can't tailor things like this. This is a real benefit. Um, and then if you need people to upload, you can put a custom message in here, and again, once once you have shared with somebody, there's Joe's name, he comes in. Had I not shared with him, his name wouldn't populate. I'd have to type it in. 
some, some professors for the class who are using this, we, we, we tried to show them that they need to copy and paste all those emails in there because they said, oh, I can't use this, I can't type 30 people in. Which is kind of funny because it's pretty easy to type, I believe. But so, so yes. why do you? Why would a faculty member use this instead of your LMS? Oh, oh, uh, instead of Moodle. Uh, okay, this does. This actually ties into Moodle. We we're, we're implementing that now. There's an API to connect to Moodle. Um, the, the the difference is the size of the files. Um, fi there's a five gig upload limit. So you, in in Moodle, it's much smaller than that. Um, I think <coughs> Unless they've changed it, 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 I think it's a gig that, it, that we have that you can upload. So file size, security in this, uh, uh, like I said earlier, is a lot higher than anything that you're going to find in Moodle. And, and the fact that with, with this, the, the, the students can, can come in here. Let me back out of it. Let's open it up. <coughs> let, me, let me go to one that has a file. Um, Mainly, mainly the, the size. Um, so is yes. your Moodle on campus or is it hosted? Uh, it, it's, it's on campus. So you can control the file size that you allow to be right. uploaded. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but they made it kind, kind of small. Yeah, I mean, could yeah, that's a choice. to this. But that's well, yeah. I, I guess, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I was Go just going to say, with our Moodle, we handle it, our IT in the back end, and the most that we can change it is 1.5 gigs. Now, you might be able to adjust it more but from what I've been told, oh, is there like, we can't with oh, our version okay. 2.2.3. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I thought yeah. I'm not the admin for Moodle. Yeah, I, yeah, I no, use I, it, I, but I know it's lower, and okay. that and that that was one of the main reasons. And the fact that but cor courses aren't always going to be there. I mean, you, you can archive courses with Moodle, but this mm -hmm. is for personal and it's for work. That's one of the things that we try to stress. Mm -hmm. You you don't have to use this to teach. But it's a true asset, so so that that was one of the other reasons um, students could put their music on, or like Joe was saying, he streams his you know MP3s from there. Yeah, another benefit is the automatic sync feature. So if you, you're sharing with 50 people and you dump a five gig movie in here, which you can stream, you can also edit documents live inside of it. Mm -hmm. They'll automatically sync to whatever machines or devices you tell it to automatically sync with. So it acts just like a network share. You can share. One folder with your entire department, or all students, or the web, or you know. Yeah, here's here's one that that, that shared with, with with most of our department using um, Office 365, a Microsoft product, which is which is horrible for us on campus, of of different ways to fix it. Um, there are version histories here, so when you, when you click on this, this has been shared with numerous people. But you can go back and see that 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 who actually set it up. Who made the edit? So you have Shepard there, Stratton there, Zolman there, and you, you can keep track of things better. And like Joe was saying, it's it, it's it's much easier for, for for the type of work if you need to collaborate with something, not necessarily through a course. Okay, so from here, you can view different files. So I can edit from from Box. I, I, you can install an app that comes with it called Box Edit. So when you click Edit, I've already installed it, but it's but it's easy enough. This comes up now. It's, it supports co-authoring, but but the, but the way that it's different um, for, from Google Docs, you typically see that in real time. This you, you have to you have to refresh it to see what it is. But all of us could be working on the same document at the same time. Now, as you see, I opened it. It automatically opened Excel. I didn't. I didn't open that. I just clicked on the file, and then from here, if I just click Save As, which I just did, and this is network based, it says that it's saving it back to Box. I all, all I, I mean, I could have made obviously made changes, but all, all all I did was do Save As. It kicks it right back up to Box with the changes back out of this. Okay, so let's let's say that we need to work on or I need to work on this file for, for, for the next month. I can sync this particular file to my computer. I, I installed a get sync app similar 
to, to Dropbox. The, the, the main difference is when, when you install that Dropbox app, it syncs every single thing that you have to your computer. With this, when you install it, you come and pick and choose. You go, well, let me click here, and you go sync folder to computer. So I'm just syncing that one folder to my computer, and then from there, I can unsync it in, in a month and be done with it and get it off my computer without having everything on there. The get sync folder itself is right here. I have two box accounts. I have a personal and firm, and this is my firm in one. If you click here, these are all the folders that I have synced right now. I had more a couple weeks ago, but I didn't sync them. I don't need them locally on my computer. Which, what you can do from here is copy and paste files into this. If, you, if I was to go in and drag a file locally off of my hard drive into that finder window, it would take it off my hard drive. So I always tell people you got to copy and paste in there. Mm -hmm. The main difference that you're going to find between using the web and the Get Sync app, you cannot upload folders to the web version. It will not allow, look, let's say you have a folder with subfolders, all these folders, you can't do that on the web version, but if you use this version, you, you can copy it and put it in there with all your, all your subfolder directories and every single file you have, and then it will sync in real time. Up, uh, up here is, and uh, I wanna stress, this is the same on Windows. I'm just using the Mac, okay? There's, it, because you're using the web, it's the same, it looks exactly the same, and then the Finder window on your Windows, you're gonna use your Explorer window locally you're gonna see the same thing. Like Joe was saying, every, every computer that you would put get sync on, these files would be there, and obviously any computer you get on and go to Furman.box.com and log in, those files would be there for you. There, there's also an iPad app, an Android app, and, and, I'll, and I'll say right now that I've complained to them a lot about this, that the app for, for the iPad and the iPhone is not nearly as robust as it should be, and they say that they're developing one, so if, if anyone's used that before, you may know what I'm talking about. But, but that's something that, that they're fixing to make it work as well as this works. Okay, so let me, um, let me scroll down and find something. So here's a default sync folder. Let's, let's say on, on, on your phone that you're taking a snapshot of something that, that you need for work. You, you, you can easily copy it back into your default sync folder and then, then it shows right back up here. Um, it is, it is tr it's truly that simple. Um, here's a .mov. Pops it up. Click it. Now this is bandwidth based, but I mean... <laughs> point being that you can stream from here. If you have a list of movies, a list of audio, you, you can set it to autoplay and it'll just go through them. And like the permissions that, that I was talking about, if you set those correctly, you can keep it behind your firewall. People cannot download it. You can use it for your course. Um, and it, it will connect with Moodle and I believe it'll it will connect with Blackboard too. They, they said that. We, we don't use Blackboard anymore but it does work with that. Um, everything is encrypted, like I was saying, so if there was some sort of issue, it, they, they wouldn't see what your actual files were. Um, Joe and I are from South Carolina, and about a year ago, they hacked into our servers and got a bunch of people's social security numbers and credit cards. They had no encryption on that. Had they used Box, you know, obviously, they wouldn't have gotten anything, which is, which is kind of bizarre to think about. <laughs> Okay, um, here you can see your updates across the board. Okay, now, now, now for each folder you can look at it, but this, this is just a quick scan to see. This is a folder I created. This, this is one of the ones that, that I edited. Scrolling down, you can see what people worked on. There's a, ITS has something, they're doing people's pictures now. So these are folders, um, excuse me, show, show when they were updated. Okay, one, one, of the, one of the other things I was talking about was um, just basically interacting. So here you see a bunch of comments that students can come in here and a professor, uh, I, I, I teach a couple of courses at Furman and I use Box in, in my course and then they can come in and put their initial reaction 
to the piece that they've heard or after they've looked at the score, things that stood out to them, and they can come in and add it in real time. All, all, all of these were put in in real time, and you can create quite a dialogue. Um, I, I can add in things, tasks that I want people to do. I can put in metadata based on the file, which, which helps it when you're searching. Um, you just come in and add tags. These are, these are some tags that I've added recently. And, and, and from there, I share that with somebody. Those tags move over with them. And you can see how some of them are here, and it relates right back. Um, th th this is great for the training I do. I have to do a lot of training for ITS. Instead of printing, uh, it, I'm just definitely getting away from that because a lot of the stuff I teach about is like Adobe InDesign, Photos, Photoshop, Premiere, stuff that's very intensive. And I can give them you know, a 100-page PDF and just put it on here. If they want to print that, they can print it. That's, that's fine. But... At the same time, it's, it's, e it's easier because one, you, you don't have to print, they have immediate access to it, and they can just preview it from here. And if it's something, like I said earlier, that I don't want them to, to download, then I can just block them from downloading it. Now, if it's a picture, like a score, and it's a one-page score of Amazing Grace or something, you could screenshot it, obviously, and you could get it. That's something that, that we can't control. but. Um, if it's a real file, a real class, I mean, it, it's going to be more than that, and I really don't believe people are going to go through that kind of trouble. Scrolling down, music librarian candidate bit videos, we're, we're hiring a, a new music librarian, and it's simple. The people on the committee have got shared a folder, the videos are in there. If you miss the live thing, you can go back and watch it. I mean, there are myriad of ways to use this. It's, it's, it's like a local share, but at least for us, we bypass VPN. All right, um, that, that's a pretty decent overview. Did, does anyone have any specific questions about how to use it? Do you know how much you pay? <clears throat> I think thirty-six thousand dollars. Thirty-six grand for the entire institution yeah. annually. Yeah, I think it is. Annually. Oh. But I, that may seem like a lot, but it is a real benefit for a lot of people. Um, again, because you have more space, you have encryption. Bypass VPN, you have 50 gigs of space. On a share, I mean, that's Joe. To get 50 gigs on a share, a local share, you, you're asking for a lot. And Fred has discussed, too, the possibility of this replacing our network shares, or at least in large part, which would save us money on the backup. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, so. no, no, I understood. Yeah. But um, HIPAA, HIPAA information you cannot put on here. You, yeah, I saw you had that Category yes. 1 information that's not allowed. Can you go back and show us what the definition yes. of that Category 1 information is? Yeah, let me just back out. Mm -hmm. um, FERPA information you can put on, HIPAA you cannot. Okay. This, this is a simple breakdown. Now, when we first started using it, we were getting a lot of emails about security because admissions, um, there's, there's another, the, oh, the disability services, I mean, certain people cannot use this on campus. I mean, there, there's a small portion who really wanted to, and, and I, I met with a couple groups, and we just determined through me and through systems and through Box that they really shouldn't put it on there. So, so the security even comes in front of what we're doing. And we probably had 10 or 12 people contact us about this. Um, so, so in fact, I mean, this is really the data that I'm most worried about people making sure that they use VPN for. So. Oh, the data's blocked. The data that yeah. I can't use here. So one of the benefits of this is you don't have to use VPN, but then the majority of the data that you're looking at, I wouldn't care whether you don't use VPN. It's this level one data yes. that I yeah. care that you use VPN. Exactly. And that's one, I mean, Fred Miller, our CIO, that's what Joe was referring to, has said that that he and he may want to get rid of the shares. And, and and I've always said, no, that we can't, because I always reference that to this. And you, and you just can't get rid of local shares. And, and I know he understands that, but, but the vision, I, I believe, you know, everything in the cloud like that, but you, but you really can't. Um, and that's something that we've had to stress, and disability services, for example, really wanted to use this, and we looked a bunch of different ways, and they can. Um, you, can you can actually get the code 
front foot from your folder, another feature, and embed that in your web page. So you could have a form, a PDF form, link back to Box, embed that in your web page. People fill out the form, it'll take it right back to Box. So, uh, so I know Admissions is using it that way, but again, that's not using any, any HIPAA information. It's more FERPA stuff, personal. Did you do training sessions for people? Yeah, I'm, 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 still, I'm still doing it. I'm, I'm the main one doing them. I find it very easy to use, but mm -hmm. um, our, yeah, I, I'm doing most of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for the permissions and stuff, it seems like people would really want to know what all of those choices do. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, I, I'll, I'll even get calls about something that people want to do, and I'll, I'll create folders and share them and see where it, where it breaks off on what they particularly want to do. Um, one, one department, there's actually a widget for it, is using that, and we set the permissions on the widget so she can just put the files in there. But it, it was kind of a bear because it was hard to get the permissions that this user wanted based on these folders from here without using the widget. So, I mean, some people are getting very deep with it, but it's a situation where the School of Education will send uh, Fred or CIO an email about training. Fred will ask me to go do it. I mean, I've done it for almost every department on campus. Um, and it, and it's, it's kind of the same thing um, because people need to use it. And the bizarre part is a lot of people don't still don't know we have it. I, I did training about two weeks ago, and mm -hmm. half the people didn't even know what I was talking about. And then I showed them, and it was like, wow. And I said, you know, you can put whatever you want on. Um, the, the, the real innovative looking people are using it for their classes to teach. And, yeah, and you can, I mean, you can do it in, in, interdepartmental, share with colleagues off campus, and like I showed you earlier, set all those permissions, or just use it for your family photos or, or whatever it is that, that you want to do. And 50 gigs of space, unless you're putting a bunch of you know movies on there that are huge, you, you, you have a lot of free space. Um, any other, yeah? This, <clears throat> we just switched to Qualtrics, which you guys may have used for a long time for your surveys. But one of the huge advantages of Qualtrics is how easy it is to collaborate. You yeah. set up a survey and then invite three or four other people to work with it. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first reaction, was how easy it is to set permissions. Yeah. Um, we use a lot of folders on a network server, a shared server. I don't know, you're kind of using the word local shares, and I'm not sure I really understand what you're Local what you mean by in their house. But we just have these servers okay, that have been used that. for decades. And there are probably things on there that could have been deleted nine and a half years ago. Yeah. And yet they're not really allocated to a specific person, yeah. and so they just kind of go yeah. on yeah. forever. Yeah. One, that's another thing I really like about this yeah. is that is that yeah. ultimately it's the user's responsibility to figure out what they can delete when they start to run out of space. Yes. As opposed to, you know, we have a server called Louise. Louise Biology, you know, who knows who set yes. up the Bio 109 folder. Yeah, and um, she, well, well, so I, I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you control it. One of the things, and, and I know we've done this for two, pe two departments maybe, but, but it hasn't been rolled out is departments having their own share. The, the issue with this is connected to the Active Directory and it's connected to me, it's connected to you, not to music, not to art. Um, Fred has worked it out where a, one or two departments are doing that through a user, but in some instances, like for a, there, there's, there's a music course that I helped set up with somebody, he gave that particular user more space to do the sharing since she was having to take the brunt of her account to house all the music. And then at the end of the semester, she just takes it back down and then gets her space back. What happens when students graduate or people leave yes. and they want their files? Gone. Can they take their files before they, they leave? They can, that's something we went, we went back and forth about that, but it was gonna cost too much money for, for them to maintain that. Mm -hmm. But because originally that's what we wanted to do. Students, you can have this for your rest of your life. Um, no, they, they, they have, I think it's 45 days. They can get a free box account. You can just drag your files over, or you get your Dropbox, put them on your local computer, but it, it's gone. You it, have to, yeah, you gotta get your stuff out of there or you'll lose it. That, that was a big deal, and at one point, we, we, we had said students, students can, can have it forever, but um, at the last minute, when we looked at the cost, it was like, no way.
type of uh, employee, for example, is terminated or leaves suddenly, Furman takes ownership of that folder and all the contents. Yeah, and, and almost immediately. The, well, the, the, the second that they take away their network account, yeah. right. <laughs> Email's locked out, this is locked out. All right, I think we need to move on. So thank you very much, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. And Jessica.